Act One, Scene Four. We're back in the cast, uh, which is short for castle, as all the cool people know. Uh, so we've got King Duncan. He's the king. Lennox. Who cares? Malcolm. Donald Bain and attendees. Mm, interesting. Uh, basically, Malcolm says, "Yep, cool." Uh, the Thane of Cawdor, uh, he went crazy, and we we've killed him, so that's good. Uh, and then Duncan says, in a nice little piece of foreshadowing, "There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust," which I feel like has been quoted somewhere else because it sounds really familiar to me that last line uh but that's basically duncan being like well you just can't tell a good guy from looking at their face i thought the old thane of cordor was a good bloke but it turns out he was a treacherous sod and we have since killed him then uh in convenient timing in walks macbeth banquo and the gang ross and angus who in the last scene have basically said to macbeth by the way you're you're you know you're on the way up just so that you know uh, and so that happens here, you know, congratulations, you're the saying of, what's going to call it, Glamis, Cordor rather, Glamis was the old one that he already was. So then Macbeth is like, cool, Duncan says, I've began to plant thee and will labour to make thee full of growing, like, yep, I'm going to grow you up. And then Banquo's like, yep, there if I grow, the harvest is your own. So he says, like, yeah, totally, it's all, all you, mate, all you, you're the boss. Uh, Duncan says, my plenteous joys want on informers seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. So like he's so happy that he's sad and contrast, juxtaposition, all that stuff. Basically, then he says, and my son will be the man. So our eldest Malcolm, the Prince of Cumberland, will be my heir, will be the next king in, king in line. And this is kind of like the famous moment from Australian politics when uh, Scott Morrison said, Any leadership ambitions? Me? Yeah. This yeah. is my leader. <laughs> there you go. And I'm ambitious for him. Uh, this is my leader. And I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm am ambitious for him. And then the very next day, um, uh, stabbed him in the back. Whereas in Macbeth, he actually stabs him in the front. Uh, and it's not a metaphor. So Macbeth says, Star, stars hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. So he's like, uh, quite clearly, that when the king says, Prince of Cumberland, my son, who is, of course, Malcolm, I say, checking the text, uh, he's the next one in line. Macbeth is sort of quite intense that he's going to kill that bloke or replace that bloke or somehow uh, make sure that he's the king. Is basically his plan at this point, despite in the previous scene him being a little bit like, maybe we'll see how this goes sort of situation. Duncan finishes off, true, worthy Banquo, he's full, so valiant, and his commendations I am fed, it is a banquet to me, let's after him whose care is gone before us bid us welcome, it is a peerless king kingsman, so it's just like, wow, despite what I just said before, all of these people are good blokes, nothing could possibly go wrong.